Hey everybody, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. For today's project, I am super excited because two of my very favorite brands have pulled together in one unique collaboration. That is Annie Sloan and IOD have brought a brand new paint inlay and you all know just how much I love the paint inlay. So for me, that is a win, win, win. Here it is, classical cameo with Annie's artwork. It is very Annie-esque and it is also very neoclassical, which is a style that I absolutely love. On the back, you can see just how many sheets you get with different designs. You can get um, four large cameos and eight small cameos with some other design work, many borders and trims. I can see this being used in so many different ways. But today I'm going to take this paint and lay, pop it on that piece of furniture in my very own style. So let's take a closer look at the piece of furniture. So the first thing that I'm gonna do with the paint inlays is I've removed them from the packaging just to take a look at the colorway. So sometimes the coloring on the design on the outside of the packaging is slightly different to the coloring on the inlay. So this is giving me a good indication of what colors to choose for the overall piece. So I want to go with something that will contrast quite well. Annie has been very clever. She's used quite neutral colors in the paint inlay my initial reaction is to go with something soft grey blue tones or even soft chateau grey tones, but I'm going to just throw everything at this and I'm going to go pink. Um, it's a while since I've used Scandinavian pink, but I'm going to soften that pink down. We're going to use it with these paint inlays. I think pink will be a great colour as long as it's kind of very muted in its tone. So I've made my decision on pink. I'm gonna start layering up the piece. I'm gonna do an undercolor and slightly texturize that. You will have seen me do this before. I did it a few weeks back on the large wardrobe. I just want to put a little bit of paint on and drag the brush over the surface so we get a few little anomalies. And then we'll start applying the pink tones over the top and maybe a color wash. Get the piece of furniture to a point where I'm really happy with the overall design before applying the paint inlays with lacquer. So off with the handles, first coat on, pop your paint inlays to one side out of the way of any paint or moisture because don't forget these are active. This is real paint on the surface. If you get these wet, it will activate. If you get a blob of paint on there, it will cause an anomaly on the surface. So pop them back in the packaging and then pop them to one side and then start painting.
that's my primer coat of old ochre on the surface of this piece of furniture. It is just literally a thin coat of chalk paint. That's why I'm calling it primer coat because you don't need to use any other products with chalk paint. If you're painting the whole project old ochre, thin coat first, then apply the second coat and you should be nearly full coverage on that second coat, depending on the shade of color. Um, at this stage, I'm gonna do a little bit of texturizing to the surface. It's nice and dry. Um, it's super grippy and chalky at this stage, which allows me to add a little bit more of the old ochre and drag my brush through whilst hitting it with some heat with a hairdryer, which will create lots of little anomalies, which should show through later on when we distress the piece of furniture and I'll have lots of lovely little bits of texture to go forward. So let's apply another coat. I'm not worrying about full coverage, it's just those little textures that I want before moving on to my shade of pink. Whilst I'm waiting for the old ochre texturizing to dry, I'm gonna mix up a custom shade of pink. I love Scandinavian pink, but it's a little bit too bright. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some Scandinavian pink to my container. We'll call it that. Then I'm gonna uh, add some Chateau Grey, which should neutralize some of the pinky tones not as much and i'm also going to go back in with a touch of old ochre just to lighten a little bit less of that and we're going to mix these three together to see what we get um it should be a pale shade but slightly more muted softer pink Definitely lovely and earthy. Yep, that's a lovely pink. So I'm gonna add a touch more of each of those colors to my shade because I need a little bit more paint than that I've mixed. But you know me guys, I just like to throw it all in and see what I get. But that is a really nice, earthy, soft pink. Okay, so the old ochre texture has dried. So I'm gonna move on to adding a thin layer using my atomizer and oval brush over the surface in a random sort of fashion, um, a soft sort of blend with the old ochre. And I've decided to put a touch of primer red here and there. 
So the Primer Red is kind of the same sort of hue as the Scandinavian mix, but it's just darker. And I'm gonna do a kind of wet on wet blend, adding the Primer Red anywhere perhaps that you would dark wax a piece of furniture. So in the apertures, maybe a bit heavier on the lower half and then just blending with, I've got two brushes because sometimes it's nice to blend with a wet brush and a dry brush and just kind of mark out a little bit of tonal difference to the surface. So wish me luck guys, let's hope we get a lovely kind of soft blend with the two colours and then we can move on to the next step which will be probably colour washing and distressing. Haven't decided on what tone of colour that will be but I'll look at the piece and then work that out as we get there. My colour blend has just about dried and of course you could go in with your lacquer and your painting lays if you kind of like this look but I promise you that I would push the boundaries with distressing over this piece and then adding the painting lays, maybe a little bit more distressing. So the colour on camera looks still quite muted but actually to the eye it's still quite candy pink, almost right back to Scandinavian pink and I think that's due to adding the primer red, it's kind of pecked the pink back up. So I've decided to go with a colour wash which I've mixed up already. This is majority Versailles, which is kind of a cream green. It's got a soft green undertone and I've added a touch of um, Chateau Grey to that. It's about 75% water to 35% paint. It's a kind of green colour. The reason I'm going for that green colour is it will continue to knock back this pink. So um, red and green are complementary colours on the colour wheel. So pink has kind of got red in it, obviously the primer red. And somewhere in the middle you will find sort of a more neutral colour. So that's why I'm adding more green. You could alternatively go with something warmer. You could go with en fleur and make it kind of darker or Paris Grey or Old White. Um, the reason I'm not using 
old white is that it will go softer and baby pink. I'm hoping that this will really do the job for what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna literally brush on the color wash all over the whole piece. I've made sure I've got something to catch all of the drips. Um, and then I'm gonna slowly work it off with a damp cloth from a bucket of water wrung out and slowly take away some of the edges revealing some of the old ochre from underneath and hopefully some of the wood on the edges. Okay, so I'm now day two of my project. The paint has dried really well overnight. I would suggest you would leave it quite a long time because there was a lot of water involved in the distressing part of the technique. So leave it a good few hours before moving on to your paint inlays. So I've pulled a few of the um, images out of the packaging so I can kind of get a mind's eye of where I'm gonna be placing these. I do know that I want to have one of the big cameos in the center. I'm not too sure whether there's enough room to have two side by side on this piece. I suppose this is the most difficult part of the process, choosing where you apply your paint inlays. So I'm gonna cut up a few of the trims and the cameos so that I can lay these down as a dry fit so I can see how it looks over the overall piece. I have this trim with the pointy fluted edges and I really like that. It kind of mirrors into the design work that's carved into the detail, almost as if it came from the same sort of mind's eye. And I think I'm gonna use this around the edge of the aperture of the door, I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of time, cut these out to the edges and then we can lay them down, dry fit them, and really come up with a great pattern for the overall piece.
Okay, so I've become a little bit scissor happy. Step away from the scissors, Jonathan. But it has led me to a different design. Um, what I did do is remove the thin grey border from the edge of here, just to see whether it would help me fit everything into the aperture. Um, that didn't work. Um, so the corner pieces that I cut up to make the square, I decided to lay them down in a different way. And it has led me to a great idea, I think, which kind of fits. So let me show you what I've come up with. Instead of having them on the edge like this, pointing inwards, I'm thinking that I will have this design pointing outwards from the edge of this aperture, um, but it still doesn't fit. So what I'm thinking is if I close the gap in each one and cut them shorter, I may need to cut a fraction of the border off so the border connects each one, I get something rather exciting, but it is gonna be more faffy. So I'll show you here. If I line up that central dot on that corner there, and then I can overlap on the corner and get almost like a square that way, and I can cut through on a 45 degree angle there, I end up with this lovely square in the corner, which is different to the way that I had it before, which looked too cluttered, if I'm honest. And then if I cut through each one of these on the border and connect, I'll do it as an overlap so you can see, connect each one of these. So it kind of goes up, down, up, down and keep on building them. What I've worked out over the length and width of this, I can end up with an exact match to that corner. And it also works the other way. I've worked it out. So it really does fit in quite well if I do that. Obviously, I've got to cut these out to make them closer to one another. I can close the gaps in. Um, with the gaps, it's far too long. So I think I've come up with my pattern. Yes, it's gonna be more complicated laying these down um, so there's no overlap. But what I will do is make sure that there's a cut in between each one on that beige line, and then they should join really lovely ending up with great corners. So I think what I'll do is I will start with my corners, make my cuts, my 45 degree cuts, and lay them down first. And then I can slot each one of these in individually. It's a great place to start with um, IOD painting lays. Quite a complicated um, part of the project, but I'm really happy with that. Then I'm thinking I will have two of these left over. I've worked it out from one pack. I'll have two of these left over. I'm thinking I might even add um, just underneath once this is um, cut out. So I may cut right up to the edge of these little beads and then lay this one over the top. So I've got one each side and then maybe we'll add the gray trim wherever that went. Let's bring back some gray trim. Maybe we'll add some gray trim either in that little crevice and around the edges, because there's plenty of gray trim, and maybe even a line going through. I haven't worked that out yet. So all I'm gonna do is focus on applying these edge ones first, then we'll concentrate on the easy bit in the center. But I have my pattern. It took a long time to work this out. But it, the IOD painting lays, you really can manipulate them the way that you want to. Just take a little bit of time thinking about your pattern and you will come up with a great design for your piece of furniture. And I'm going to be really happy with this. I'm sure once they're on and taken off, it will look absolutely amazing.
Okay, now time for application of painting lays. I'm gonna be using Annie Sloan matte lacquer to apply them. There is another tutorial. I've done many tutorials on painting lays. I will um, put in the description box the original one where I did both ways, paint and lacquer, if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to apply them. At this stage, the first inlay is always the most scary. I don't know why, it is just, once you get going, you will, will be just fine. It's, um, it's one of those things, you just have to just go for it. So, I'm gonna start with the corner pieces at either end. So the, there's the two corners. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay them to one side um, because I like to spray the back of the, the painting lays. This adds a little bit of stretch um, to the painting lay. Lay them out to one side, making sure they're the right way up. And I'm gonna just slightly spritz with an atomizer. You can, you can spray the paint side, but I would say go with the back side with this being a bit fiddly. Right, so I've got a large brush and I'm just gonna apply kind of a liberal amount of lacquer to the surface where I want to apply these. I'm gonna make sure I go up to the corners because it's all gonna be lacquered afterwards anyway. So that's my first one. Now time for application. Leave that just to one side. Line it up with the corner. Straight into the lacquer. And the same again, making sure we get that pattern nice and matched. You've got a little bit of wriggle room with these. I'm not gonna worry about the overhang so much. I'm just gonna let it trail over the edge. And that is my first paint inlay in. I have a damp cloth, which I'm gonna press this down with the damp cloth. You could use your atomizer, but make sure you get good contact to good contact. They have to be wet on the back for this to, for the magic to happen. I'm trying to be clean about it with the, um, the damp cloth. Right, let's go in with the other corner. A little bit fiddly. Pop the other one on, get the pattern to blend. Everything meets up nicely. And I'm happy with how that looks. In with the damp cloth, just pressing down. nice and smooth. So now I'm gonna move along to adding these. Here's all my painting lays, so I can take them to one side again. And I can spray them as we go along. I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint the whole surface with lacquer and do this pretty quick. Don't forget, they are very forgiving because they're designed in a very painterly way. So don't worry too much about how you lay these because they will look great. No, ma no matter what you do, they will look great. I can go right up to the edge. And then 
then we can go in one by one with the inlays. Okay, so you may have seen me cutting round some of the edges of the beaded cameo. I'm gonna be using the um, male cameo for the front. And the reason I've cut round the edge is just to make life easier. I know that once I layer these um, paint inlays down, so the cameo will go first, and then the border that I've selected to go through the middle will go over the whole thing. So, once I have my lacquer on, I know that what sits underneath the cameo will not transfer to the design. It will only be the edges. So it should look something a little like this when it's transferred. That will run through the middle. The cameo will run over the top and will have nice clean edges. Of course, you could cut the center section out of that border, but I'm just making life a lot easier because I'm applying these all by eye. So I know that this border will be central to the two centre designs and the cameo will be centred to the lower two designs. It may be slightly out, who knows? It's one of those things. You could measure and make little marks, but I just love risking it for a biscuit and just going for it. So in with the male cameo first and then we'll layer up the um, the border trim all the way through.
now time to complete the sides and the top of the project. I've selected a few of the border trims just to go top and bottom of the sides and the smaller cameo to go in the centre. Okay, it's now time for the big reveal of the paint inlays. You can always tell when they're ready to come off because the paper goes kind of opaque, almost papery again, the pattern kind of diminishes. Um, with lacquer, I would say, always remove them um, a lot sooner. So as soon as you get to this point, start removing them when they're almost dry to touch on the surface. Um, chalk paint slightly different. If you're laying your paint in lace to chalk paint, you can go up to 24 hours, even longer, to remove them. But lacquer slightly different. It hardens and toughens, so they will be more difficult to remove. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to damp down the surface and slowly peel each one away. You could use an atomizer, damp cloth, damp sponge. Uh, I'm going to use probably all three. Um, what I find is with anything with black, if you saturate the surface too much and the water runs behind the paint inlay, then you could get some um, 
paints kind of trickling away. I have got one or two areas of bleed through, not from the piece of furniture, bleed through from the paint inlay because I pushed the inlay into the wet lacquer and moved it around. That's something that I will have to address maybe with a touch up of pink, who knows. When we take them off, I'll be able to see just how good this is. Okay, so I'm really pleased with how the texture has allowed the paint inlays to look really broken and beautiful. They've all come out pretty good. I'm really happy with the results. There's a few things that I want to do to uh, add a little bit more interest to this. I feel that on the front panel, it's lacking something else around here. It looks a little bit insipid. So what I'm gonna do is mix up a color that's not unlike the color that's in here which I think is somewhere close to Chicago Grey, maybe a touch of Louis Blue in there. And I'm gonna pop it into that little groove, top and bottom. And I think I'm also gonna add a, a key line in um, Athenian Black along the top. So it just adds sort of a bit of depth to top and bottom of that panel. I've also got these little knuckles on the um, legs, which I think I'm gonna paint out in the other colours, sort of the um, country grey colour and the blue. Also, I haven't decided what to do with these little um, carved details. I'm thinking that I might try and marry them into the pattern here, the same two colours, a bit of white in there. And the other thing that I wanted to mention, I've left my paint inlays to dry, um, lay them out flat, on a, a flat surface, let them dry out. Now, normally when you're using paint inlays with chalk paint, you can reuse them up to about three to maybe four times. When you're using lacquer on the surface, it kind of seals in the paint side, so you cannot get another use. But um, a little friend of mine mentioned to me, well, I use them today, Kapash, which I think is a wonderful idea. So what you can do is dry these out, Cut the, cut the details out and then glue them face side up into a project so you can get a second use out of the paint inlays when you're using lacquer 
with decoupage, which I think is an awesome idea. I cannot remember who told me that, but somebody did, and it is such a good idea. So you could reuse the paint inlay as a decoupage sheet. Okay, so we're nearly at the final hurdle. We have to seal all of the paint inlays down. I'm using 50% water, 50% matte lacquer, Annie Snow matte lacquer, through my spray bottle. Make sure it's really well incorporated, and then we're gonna give it a light spritz, probably two coats. Once the first coat's dry, apply another one, and then if you like, you can go back over with a brush at that point, once it's all dried, um, you can cover it with wax. I think I'm gonna keep on going with this project, so I might add a color wash, I might add dark wax, white wax, I'm not sure. I will cover that off when I get to it. But for now, let's seal down all of the paint inlays, all of the paint, so it stays nice and put on the project. So my lacquer has dried really, really well, and I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of sandpaper just to reveal some of the texture from underneath, the old ochre that we originally applied to the cupboard. And I'm just gonna break the surface around the edge, just revealing some of that lovely patina. I'll do some on here where there's some texture. It's up to you how far you go with your distressing, but I quite like it heavily distressed.
there are just a few steps left to complete this project, one of which is I'm going to wax the whole piece. I've decided I think I might go in with a touch of dark wax. It should richen some of the colours. Handle's got to go back on. And of course, the interior of the cabinet. This is quite dark inside. I want to freshen the whole inside up with a lighter colour, which I've mixed up again, Louis Blue and Chicago Grey to make a soft blue, which is a little bit like the colour that's in the paint inlay. Um, half and half, 50-50, Louis Blue, Chicago Grey. Um, what else is there to do? I will also, if there's enough paint, I will also paint the underside of the cabinet as well. The back is already painted in the pink. Um, this is just because if somebody does choose to buy this from me and they take it away, they're more, more than likely to place it in their car. So um, and they'll turn it on the back. So to do the underneath is quite a nice idea. It's a good shout just to cover all surfaces on the overall piece. So let's get stuck in with the Louis Blue Chicago Grey mix. I've already painted in the inside of the um, the cupboard with the pink and around the door. So I'm going to go up to this line nice and clean and it should look lovely and fresh. Well, I'm nearing the end of my project. The sun has decided to shine and I think that is a great omen for such a wonderful product. So a big shout out to Annie Sloan for designing something that is so amazing and I can see you guys using it in so many different ways. And also a big shout out to the IOD sisters as well because they have designed a very unique product for the furniture painting market and I absolutely love it. I may have said that already at some point. I love IOD painting lays. So the final thing for me to do with this project is I'm gonna give it a coat of clear wax. Now you don't need to do this if you've already given it two coats of lacquer, but I love the soft luster of wax. I may add a touch of dark wax to some of the details. And of course the handle must go back on and that's my project finished. So please stick around till the end shots of the overall project so you can see all of the finer details. And if you're here on my live premiere, thank you so much. You guys have been here week in, week out with me on my premiere. Don't forget to watch to the end, tune out, then find the video again and leave me a comment because you know what that does. It helps the algorithms to the overall tutorial. Well, much love and thank you so much for joining me and Mr M once again on this tutorial. I will catch you all next time.